Ladies and gentlemen, um, I got into mobile gaming in about 2001, free to play in about 2005, and there was a real five year span there where I felt like the, the crazy guy alone in the wilderness who believed in mobile, believed in giving things away for free. And um, I really wasn't alone. UC was right there with me. He's a visionary technologist and entrepreneur who brought us cross-promotion with Amplifier, video advertising with Impact, and video replay of gameplay with every play. He's brilliant. He's going to talk to us today. Now there are all these kids on our lawn, and he's got something to say to them. Ladies and gentlemen, my good friend, UC Lakanen. Thank you, Scott. So today I'm going to overload you with data. So I'm going to present fairly few opinions, a few of those, but I'm primarily going to just glaze your eyes over with a lot of data. And the first preamble for that is that do not write. The presentation is already up. You can go to this URL and download it with all the data. There's no need to write anything down. So rather you listen and think of interesting questions then. That especially stands for Nick because I know your questions are going to be the damn hardest. <laughs> so you can ask. I don't answer any one of yours, but you know, anybody else is welcome to try. So as I said, the presentation is already up. There's actually more slides on, on SlideShare, so no need to write anything down. This data in this presentation is collated from two surveys. One's done by us in actually almost a year ago, so it's a little outdated. We're doing a new one for GDC this year. And EDAR, which is a well-respected video game research agency, did their own survey in Q2 2013. So altogether, we are looking at data that came from about 5,000 mobile gamers. Now, the important thing when we think about user acquisition, virality, retention, all this, all this jazz is like, what can you measure and what you cannot measure? You cannot measure word of mouth. Because by, by definition, it happens like this. Hey, like, have you played this game? It's really fucking awesome. You've got to play that. And like, how do you measure that? There's no way. You, can, you cannot put a tracking pixel between me and Nick. The only way you're going to figure out how important word of mouth and other organic ways of driving user acquisition is, is you ask people. And so that's what we and EDAR did. And what we found out is actually gelled with a lot of surveys that's done previously, is that word of mouth and the various forms of social media type of word of mouth is the number one driver of uh, download, uh, download decisions. Secondly, it's the App Store, search, featuring, and user reviews within the App Store. And then everything else falls down. Obviously, when you ask people what's influential, you get some selection bias, like, of course, my friends matter. But the difference is huge. We spend a lot of collective time and energy talking about paid user acquisition, Facebook optimization, and whatnots. And when it really comes down to it, it's like, well, what are my friends playing now? What's cool? What's happening? Oh, what's featured? Those are the two things that really people, ordinary people, look at and trust. This is our survey with 1,800 people, and EDAR, with 3,000 people in their survey came out with exactly the same results. Word of mouth, either hearing from somebody or seeing somebody show you a game were the two biggest drivers of, of decisions to download. Then after that, you get featured apps and top charts. Then Facebook invites and whatnots, which I also uh, colored blue because they are word of mouth. And then you get text messages and Twitter posts on the road. So when we think about advertising, the influence of that in both services, about a half of what you see in word of mouth and what you see on, on app stores. So to me, then, the, the question is, is like, well, it's really interesting that this happens, but how can we do more of it? We all talk about how painful user acquisition is, how expensive it is. And here is a free, universally accepted, trusted method for user acquisition, i.e. hearing from a friend. How can we do more of it? So we dig down a little bit more into where this happens, and, and we kind of, this is the uh, split of in our survey of the different word of mouth methods. So the in person stuff was really the most influential of all, which as with the EDARs. Then you have Facebook posts, tweets, and shared screenshots and fan videos, which are kind of a day more involved gamer media. There are two types of this so there's the in person one, and there's the online version. In person one is really hard to accelerate because it depends on me actually meeting someone. With the online one, that you can actually accelerate. You can do something about it. You can make it go faster. So to me, this is the opportunity. How can we take more of naturally occurring behavior and move it to a medium where it can go faster, sp spread further, and reach more people? 
So this is what this session is really all about. How do we do more of that? So in our survey of 1,800 people, we asked them like, what kind of features are valuable for them while they're playing. And the red ones are not important. The blues are somewhat important. The green ones, we ask which of these are extremely important. And I think that's really where you get to the point where people are starting to tell you something you should pay attention to. The rest of this you don't, doesn't really matter. But these are all factors that drive viral growth. We also asked them about chatting and all kinds of other social features. So these were not the only ones we asked about, but these are the only ones that drive viral growth. And because we have a limited time today, I'm going to only drive into one part of this. One's playing together, and the second is sharing. Playing together is really the growth through some kind of inviting system, whether it be Facebook, text messaging, uh, emails, whatnot. These are primarily really driven by the game design of wanting to play together and there being more value when I bring my friends over, or that the game makes me laugh and I want to directly invite somebody in the game. This is really up to the game designer and the developers to make this happen. So I'm not going to dig down in that part today because we have a limited time and otherwise we would need 45 minutes to do that piece too. But you can download the presentation. There's some slides about that too. The one I'm more interested in, which we haven't really in this industry covered more, is sharing. That is, look at me. I'm having fun. Look at this thing. It's awesome. I want to engage you. Look at, look at my level. Look at my character. Look at my Let's Play video. These are all those things that people want to share because they're having fun, and they're not necessarily targeted to one specific person, like, I want to play with Nick. It's targeted at all of you, potentially. And it could, be, it could be go viral, like Gangnam Style or Flappy Bird. It's really wanting to broadcast and show off. So we're going to dig into a little bit more about the shared content piece. So in our survey, we wanted to specifically look at this kind of sharing type of activity, something you're broadcasting out to the world. And I was somewhat surprised, even though I had my bias of doing the survey, like, of course, I would like video sharing to be important. But I was somewhat surprised when the results came in and we found that they, this kind of a, people that rank sharing screenshots of video replays or even live broadcasting my mobile game is extremely important, rank between 10 to 20% of the correspondents, sorry, the survey uh, respondents. And that's a really large segment of people who say, this is extremely important while I play. Like 10% of people saying it's extremely important for, for me to live broadcast my game as I play on mobile. This is a hardcore user base on mobile who wants to go out in the world and get their stuff out. This is what we call the sharers. We think these are the people, the subsegment of people we should be talking about, similar we talk about whales or non-payers. Because they're almost as influential to their success as a paying user. These are people who are going to go out and spread the word. Edar also looked at this from the perspective of what do people do to share their game. And still, the offline stuff rules, rules highest here. So you have the verbal and the showing part. There's a star rating and then inviting. And this is actually something that, this is a question like, what have you already done? And in there, this, this is not our survey, so they did this independently of us. I, I found very curious that they say that of the 3,000 people, 22% sometimes or often have posted a video of gameplay footage from mobile. And I don't know even how they do that, because obviously our technology is not in that, that many games. We are currently live in 280 games on iOS and launching today on Android. But there's clearly a segment of people that correlates with roughly with what we found, about 10 to 20% of people saying that sharing is extremely important. So there's clearly two different surveys are pinpointing the same place. There are people who want to share, and they want to share in a very visible, expressive manner. So we want to understand, like, who are these sharers? Like, why should we care about this? It's like, of course, cool if they share their screenshots or videos. It's all cool. But why do, why do we care about these people? And so we segmented these people against uh, they all respondents from there. And we found that they download more games, they play more games. Well, this is kind of a obvious. If they're really into sharing of mo for mobile games, they're probably likely to be heavier game gamers. What was really interesting on EDAR study is that these people are also more heavy payers. The more involved the sharing is, the more active they're in sharing, the more likely they are to pay. So 5% of all mobile gamers on EDAR study pay 10 bucks or more per month. Once you get into sharing, you get the 11% being heavy payers. And once you get into heavily into video sharing, so somebody who's really into this, you get to 25% of these people being heavy spenders. Now, 
this starts to get in a really interesting territory. It's obviously, these are very interlinked. You cannot say which one causes the other. But clearly, offering sharing functionality is probably going to be something that payers are interested in. And similarly, if they're interested in sh sharing, maybe there's something there that, uh, in your game that will also get them to pay. So there's clearly correlation. Now, this one was really, again, interesting for me, Dar. When you look at what kind of sharing, sharing um, so to continue on the correlation part, what kind of sharing are people interested in when they are into paying or heavy paying? Then everything goes up, but especially the segments where you look at doing something that's not just uh, kind of a doing one-off, but you want to tell somebody about gameplay, you want to post footage, you want to discuss in forums, all this kind of a, kind of a little bit more broadcasting type of uh, things and, and engagement with other players is starting to become more important. And we're going to talk about this in a little bit more in detail. But I think this, these two last slides together really po paint a picture in which sharers are some of your most valuable users. They play more, they pay more, and they spread the word. So when you think about your analytics and think about what kind of users you'd be segmenting out and what kind of features you should offer, this is a small segment, I mean 20% of your users. Getting them engaged and getting them the tools to share are probably going to increase actually paying because they're going to have more fun expressing themselves in your game, retaining longer, spending more time in your game, paying more, and probably bringing in more people into your game. They play more, they pay more, and they spread the word. Now, the question, of course, then to ask is like, why on earth do they share from a mobile game? What's the motivation? And this is the, uh, across the board from EDAR server, 3,000 people. Why do people share? There's this, obviously this need to kind of tell your friends and get them to play this game you discovered to be kind of at the explorer who finds cool things. And to a lesser extent, you want to be the expert or you want to be more involved in the community. So people crave social things. Across everybody, if they want to share, they want to be involved. All right, that's cool. What about the people who are into, into more actively into sharing? The people who really kind of, kind of uh, heavily engage in this behavior. For them, it becomes more and more about the community. That is, it's not, it's of course important to bring your friends in. But they want a community. They want to be part of your games user base. They want to connect with others, probably also with you, the developer. What, what's more ultimate is recognition of than you posting a screenshot or a video from a game and then the developer comes and is like, that's awesome, you rock, man. You're going to be like, holy shit, I'm going to post 100 more videos. Hopefully, at least one of them gets recognition from the developer again. So these people really crave recognition. They crave to be experts. They want a connection. And what's interesting here is, to me, is this is not necessarily real world friendships we're talking about. But we have a common hobby in this game. If I go to the basketball fields and start uh, shooting hoops, I know the guy next to me doing the same thing shares the hobby. And we can talk about shooting hoops even if we're completely different people. And we can connect over that. And I think the same applies to games that are services that uh, enable multiplayer or uh, whether it's asynchronous or synchronous PvP or PvE. There's something to talk about here. There's something in the plan. And there's a reason why this one game is called Clash of Clans and not Clash of Individuals. So you really want to think about the game, especially when you're planning it to be a service, and how do you create a community in your game? How do you then enable people to express themselves in the community and become experts? Be recognized for the skill and the money they spend in your game. Across the board in our, in our survey, we found that sharers want social features. They want all, everything is just across the board substantially more important to them. Whether it be well, chats, to forums, to playing with friends. And for example, you know, we talk about sharers, I talk, I talk about sharers wanting to express to everybody, but they also say that 60% of them say that they want to play with their real friends. Well, obviously you can plug in on Facebook in, into your app, or you can enable, for example, inviting people through your contacts book on your mobile phone. Clearly, Sharers are social creatures because they pay more, play more, share more. You really want to also enable them to be, connect with other people. So 
The sharers are retaining users that want community features. I don't think you're going to get people to share on the first, first go at the game. And why would you? You're not going to get a great share. Whereas they go in and they invest time and effort in your game, they're going to be proud of the farm. They're going to be proud of their clan. They're going to be proud of all kinds of things in your game. And when you think of what the edge of how do people discover my game, if you're entertaining them while they play, they're more likely to bring out the iPhone. What if they don't meet the person? How do you enable them to do these things? It's really going to be one of those things that you just have to be part of your, your story. Whether it's say, posting a screenshot to Facebook and telling your buddies, like, wow, look at this. This is really awesome. Or if you're sharing a screenshot, uh, replay into YouTube. Whatever the medium is, where their friends are you, or their followers are, you want to enable them to bring that word out. Now, it's also interesting is the people who are into sharing are also more into discovering online. So when you compare people who are into heavy sharing or heavy video sharing, obviously they consume more social media. So if they like sharing, they're probably more likely to find on Facebook, they're more likely to find on a video service or text messages. And the interesting thing that this enables is, is a kind of a viral loop. They are on social media, they're consuming it, reading what their face, friends post on Facebook, reading what's up on Twitter, watching Let's Play videos on YouTube. That leads into discovery. These are explorers, they want to try out new things. That then leads into engagement if your game is good. And if, if they get engaged, then you can create more sharing. This is not clearly as tight of a loop as a viral loop where you can say you send an invite and there's an immediate action of installing the game. This is much more loosely formed and it's harder to pinpoint the cause and effect. But clearly for people who are into sharing, they are more into discovery online. They are more into downloading more games, spending more time in those games. And I think you really want to figure out how do you create a community around them and make them stars in that community. So they create those interesting pieces of content and can spread the word. Now, I think a very important question is also is like, are you having finite resources at your disposal? Then what kind of a sharing functionality should you build into your game? So I'm going to run a little bit of an experiment with you guys. And first of all, I want to ask those of you who played this game or know this game not to participate. Which ones of you actually know this game? OK, a few. So those of you who know this game, you don't get to participate. So I'm going to do a Twitter share. This is my Twitter share, about 140 characters. This game is like the snake, but you fight monsters. Snake from Nokia, of course. Swipe to steer your, your um, snake made of heroes as, that you can level up, kill the baddies, but just don't hit anything. That's roughly as much as you can put on Twitter in one tweet. OK, so the experiment here is you've seen the icon for the game, and now you have my Twitter share. Take 10 seconds and imagine what the game looks like. What does the screen look like? What kind of characters? What kind of feeling? What, do you, what would this game be, be like? OK, let's see if you imagine something like this. Anybody get close? A few. OK, you got a good imagination. Great. Now, combine these together. You now you have a description. You have the icon. You have a screenshot. This would be a Facebook post, pretty much. What does this game feel like to play? How do the characters move? What's the action? What do it would feel like to be in the middle of, like, how hectic is this? Again, take about 10 seconds and imagine that. So. Next, I'm going to do a video share. So I think the argument makes itself. Video is worth 1,000 images. 1,000 images are worth about, one image is worth about 1,000 words of text, and so on. You cannot spell video games without video. It's very cheesy, but it's true. 
it's really hard to imagine the cause and effect and reaction and action and reaction in a game if you cannot see it in, in action. So I really think Apple should get on the act and get videos on the App Store like Google has already. We need to think about when we, share, when we build sharing, we need to think about videos over screenshots over text. Because videos can show what you are proud of, what you created in the game, the full range of action. And when you do it automatically, when you record the game without the user having to do anything, you can just offer the user an instant replay that he can share if he, was, if he created something interesting on the session that he played. This data is, is from YouTube. And YouTube did a survey of, I don't know exactly how many people, and this came out in Google I.O. 2012. So it's a little old, but it's, it's, it's an interesting one because it came from uh, to YouTube's audience, audience. And they asked, this was not specifically for mobile games, it was specifically just for games in general. Like, what kind of things happened after you watched a game-related video? And, you know, it's pretty interesting to know that 50% said they downloaded the game after watching a video. So that's an incredible conversion rate. So seeing a video of a game, then going and taking action. Referral and other types of activities, whether it be changing my mind or searching for more information, are all pretty prevalent. So the trigger from seeing something to taking action, whether it be download or not download, which I think is also inter interesting that some people say like, well, decided not to download. That's, that means that they've actually been informed and they can decide on that information. It's much more you can do it in one image or a text. So my recommendation based on all this would be, first, of, first and foremost, you share if you care. Like this is, don't incentivize sharing for the sake of just getting the word out. You need to figure out the moment in your game where people are happy, elated, frustrated, or somehow emotional about the game. Why do they want to share? Maybe they got an achievement. Maybe they unlocked something. Maybe they killed the boss f after three battles. Or maybe they didn't. The frustration can also be an interesting thing to share. Try and talk to the user, like, hey, you know, it's been five times. Maybe ask for help. Tell in our forums. Invite a friend to help you out. You need to give them a trigger to action, and that to me is emotion. I really believe in the power of visual media, especially moving images over text. It's like a lot of games have this button, Facebook button or Twitter button, and you can push that, and all it does is plus like a readily made text, like, I'm playing this awesome game, come join me. I'm like, no, I'm not. Like, obviously, it was pre-generated. There's nothing personal about it. And it's not interesting at all. So like, kill those Facebook and Twitter buttons and put them something interesting in there, like something I'm proud of sharing and not just a pre-made boring piece of text. Anything you do, remove the friction. Capture automatically. You know when something cool is happening in your game, so why are you not taking a screenshot of it? You know when the user does something cool. You just gave him a high score multiplier. Take a screenshot. Look, look at you go. Share this with your buddies. It's so rudimentary that it's kind of a, no. Anyway. So don't make the user think about it. Just give him, give him something to do and a trigger, an easy way to share. And I think sharing is kind of self-reinforcing. There's this viral loop that I talked about, but also when you share, you're also buying into it. You're like, I shared, therefore this game is good. So you, I think you're going to get into more and more sharing as you teach people doing it. And, and those, of who, those of the users that really get into that, if you have a community around your game, may even want to become stars. They want to be followed. They want other people to know what they created. We see this especially in games like Bad Biggies, which is a sandbox game where people create these awesome robots and battleships in a physics sandbox, and they want to post, post those and like, look at what I created. And then there's 150,000 uh, views and hundreds of comments like, oh, someone can you do more? Like, I, we love you, you're fantastic. And then you know, that, that feels really good. It's an expressive medium to be, have that adul adulation coming at you like, wow, I'm really good. I'm doing something here. And I think for sharers, these are really valuable users. You want to keep them. And I think I would really encourage you to think about the kind of out of game, but inside game social experience. Out of game meaning that it doesn't have to be part of your game. I, it's not invites or clan systems directly that affect the game mechanics. But it's in game 
that the user doesn't have to go to a website or a Facebook group or Twitter you know, list or whatever. It's inside the game. There's an easy access button pointing to the community. And it loads inside the game. It doesn't have to look like the game, but it has to be accessible with, from the game. Not as a, here's your URL to the forums. Who's going to go there? Nobody. And finally, you want sharers. So this is the condensed version of my presentation. You'll find more data at slideshare.net slash abusi, which is my nickname. You'll also find my uh, main GDC presentation from last year, which takes this data and looks at it from a different lens. So there are two presentations, one from GDC Europe and one from the main GDC. You'll find them both, both in there. EDAR graciously provided quite a lot of data for this. EDAR makes a fantastic set of reports, which cost quite a bit of money. But if you, if you thought their graphs were pretty, they have plenty of more of those, and, and you can justify it to your, uh, your boss, and they are pretty, pretty good stuff, actually. I've read them through. So with that, I want to close the session and op open it up for questions. Thank you, Yusi. By the way, the name of the game he was showing is called Nimble Quest. It's outrageously fun. You should check it out. I've played hours and hours and hours of Nimble Quest. So, you see, my question for you is, it sounds like sharers are very, very valu valuable to your overall business ecosystem. Is there some sort of technology out there that can allow me to easily implement sharing in my game? Facebook has a lot of cool SDKs. But uh, for video sharing, there are two companies that provide this. One is ours, EveryPlay, and one's our dear competitor, Camcord with K. They're also around here in the show somewhere. So both provide video sharing. Ours, ours is, I think, slightly better. But you know, you, you'll make this a judgment call yourself. For screenshots, they're not really, you, know, you don't really need a technology for screenshots. You can make your screenshots yourself. Uh, but for video recording, I would really encourage you to think about how do you make, how you do make it personal. So for example, our technology allows the user to record himself while he plays. So you can have like a commentary track as you're playing. And uh, but it's really uh, both, both technologies are pretty capable. So either one you go with, I think you should, it's not about technology, it's about thinking about how do you enable your game to be expressed outside of the game? How do you get the word out that this game is fun and people are loving it? I, I hope the audience appreciates what I did there. Unfortunately, we're a couple minutes over. Oh, so sorry. UC's adoring public will have to harangue him at the back of the back right. of the room I'll highly be outside recommended. Of the door there. He's a great guy to speak to. Thank, Thank you, Scott. you UC. Or tonight at the party.